Hey, Crawl Spacers, welcome to a special edition. As you know, we're celebrating our 25th anniversary of the show. And I thought, what way to get the party started than talking to one of my all time favorite writers? We've got Marv Wolfman in the house. Marv, thank you so much for joining us here on the Crawl Space. My pleasure. Should be fun. Awesome. Um, we're we're uh, talking about your run. Let's go a little bit over it. Uh, you started in 1978. Uh, I'm giving you a reader's digest for the viewers, 78 to 80. You were the main writer and editor on amazing Spider-Man. You wrote it from issue number 182. Let me get this up here. And you went until issue 204 with of course, a black cat story. Uh, some of the highlights, some of the major things you co-created the Felicia Hardy, the black cat, you brought the burglar back in issue 200. And you also... Why was he called the burglar? He killed Uncle Ben. Why isn't he called the murderer? That's true. That's true. I don't understand that either. <laughs> we'll talk about the burglar when we get to issue 200. But you also, right out of the bat, you had Peter propose. But before we get there, we got to go back to Amazing Fantasy 15. I was reading this book, which is now 20 years old at this point, that Tom DeFalco put, on, put out. And he talked... And you talk about how you initially didn't like Spider-Man getting in your amazing fantasy book, huh? I uh, was really enjoying yeah. the short little uh, horror, little monster stories that Steve Ditko and Stan did. And there were so many superheroes already. I just didn't want another one. I wanted to read those stories. You know, right. I had plenty of superhero stories to read. But I bought Amazing Fifteen, uh, Amazing 15, yeah, Issue Fifteen. Yeah, I went. Oh, this is good. And then uh, when Spider Man One came out, this is really good. Mm -hmm. And became Spider Man became very quickly my favorite Marvel character. Well, that's awesome. Did you? Hopefully, you've held on to that Amazing Fantasy Fifteen, or is it lost to time? Do you still have it? L lost to time. I'm oh. sorry. I don't know how. It <laughs> just wasn't there uh, one day. Yeah. Uh, maybe someone stole it. Maybe it just, I don't know. Cause I well, never sold it. Maybe what the burglar did in issue 200, the silver fish got to it. Maybe they ate it. <laughs> it I would hate to think that. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> um, talk a bit about uh, you. You were a bit, according to that book also, you are a bit hesitant to take on writing Spider-Man. Uh, Cause you, yeah. you had the fantastic four offer. And then the editor also wants you to do, Spidey, talk about that a little bit. Uh, I was uh, called up by Archie Goodwin, and he, because uh, he knew that I really wanted to write the Fantastic Four. I love the book. Um, uh, it was the most imaginative comic I've ever seen at that particular time. There was new characters being created every issue, and I never saw anything like that. Uh, but he said, if I'm doing the Fantastic Four, he wants me to take all take on Spider Man. The thing about Spider-Man that I wasn't sure about was that Stan's dialogue was very precise. It was very funny, very deep in places, uh, but it was a very specific voice pattern. Mm. And the Fantastic Four, except for the thing, talked straight for the most part. Right. You just had to concentrate on Reed would be talking very formally. Uh, Johnny would be talking very flippantly. Uh, Sue would be more explanative about things, tell, explain how things are done. Right. And um, Ben was the one that had a totally different speech pattern. Yeah. Spider-Man, I wasn't sure I could do it. I, frankly, it wasn't that I didn't want to. I just didn't know if I had the chops to do Stan's dialogue because I loved it so much. I found out very quickly that Fantastic Four was a much harder book because it was so constantly inventive stan and jack did amazing work on that book uh mm -hmm. but i found my writing style meshed very quickly with spider-man so i was really relieved uh, it was exactly the opposite of what i thought i was getting myself into does when you write does peter have a different voice in spider-man is it hard to keep the two separate or are they the same no they're they're not the same but one's a put on hmm uh, Spider-Man's voice is the put on it's, right. it's Peter behind a closed door, being able to say everything that he always wanted to say, but never had, never could. 
Yeah. Whereas um, Spider Man was the voice on the other side of the door that let 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 him say everything he wanted, but right. he never do as Peter. Right. Uh, the id, the ego. If you get into the mental part of it, somewhere in the middle is <laughs> the real Peter Parker, I guess. Um. So, uh, issue one eighty two. Uh, you you replaced your friend Lynn Ween, uh, who was writing it, and and I enjoyed his stuff with the Bart Hamilton Goblin. Uh, you came on with issue one eighty two with the Big Wheel story, and the Rocket Racer came back. Talk about right. that. Um, my thought was because as I said, I wasn't very sure I could write the stuff, uh, correctly. I wanted to try just a straightforward stories. I didn't want to do anything fancy. I didn't want to do anything that would be more problematic. I wasn't, I already wasn't sure I could write Spider-Man. So I was just going to come up with some villains who were straight on. Let's, let's fight. Yeah. And I didn't have to worry about that. I knew I could do the um, subplot stuff, all the characterization stuff that I never had any problem with, but I wanted to make sure that I could do the Spider-Man stuff. So that's why it, these two characters uh, decided to use them because they would not, they would let me learn how to write Spider-Man while I was uh, not having to worry about creating some great villain or something of that sort. Your subplot stuff is the stuff that's so memorable right off the bat. First issue, Cracker Jack with the ring. Talk about, about that. How did, why did you want to start right there? First issue. It was my feeling that uh, Peter Parker had been mishandled for years, mm -hmm. uh, he, Peter was somebody who was sort of a loser. Uh, things always went bad for him. Um, he was struggling against himself, struggling. He had that internal struggle and he was constantly trying to, to make it work. And that doesn't work when you're dating a supermodel. Mm. You, you become the envy of everybody if you're, uh, if you're, if you're doing that. And I just thought there's no way in God's good earth that that's Peter Parker anymore. Peter has to be a character who has to struggle for everything. And in this case, MJ was somebody who initiated the entire affair. Mm. So yeah, with the face of was, Tiger. Yeah. 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 That was not to me, Peter Parker. And I wanted to get back to the original version of Peter Parker, which was the loser type. Is he more of a loser or an everyman? What do you think? Well, when everything or is, goes, is the everyman a loser? I don't know. <laughs> no, when ev when everything goes for, goes against you all the time, yeah. Um, essentially, he's the he's the character that has the uh, storm clouds over his head, and oh, he yeah. wants to do the right thing, and something goes wrong. He would never, ever, in my mind, be dating Mary Jane because he. I don't think he'd be able to talk to her, let alone date her. Um, are, are you not a Mary Jane fan or do you, do I thought you, she was fine, but she was not, yeah. she was not the, somebody who helped Peter be somebody else. He would, she was just, as I say, she was out of Peter's league in yeah. this particular sense. And my feeling was that it, it forced everybody to change what Spider-Man was all about because now he had a perfectly good uh, home life, whereas before his frustrations, mm -hmm. he helped take out, he took out his frustrations on the bad guys. Right. right. Well, in the next issue that you wrote, she returned the ring and uh, she didn't want any part of it. She's too much of a party girl, she says. Which, and uh, and again, know. the whole idea was he would not be dating her. Let's remove her from the scene. Yeah. You took her off the table for a bit. Yeah. Um, uh, you brought in Betty Brant and you kind of split up Ned, uh, had, you put some turmoil in Ned and Betty's relationship and, uh, Peter wound up in the middle of that mess. It sounds like that was, that was some good drama. That was some good drama. Talk about that idea. Well, what you want to do is create a good supporting cast that helps yeah. feed the main character that helps the main character figure out what to do sometimes. So when other couples are having problems, Peter can learn from that. Yeah. Um, it, it kind of made Spider-Man not look the greatest by kind of making out with a married woman. <laughs> that, that was drama. I'll give you that. But she shows up right at his apartment with a hot cup of coffee and, uh, 
looking extra flirty. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember, uh, to be honest, so long ago. And yeah. it was a, it was just a subplot. But um, yeah. I don't remember exactly uh, why it worked out that way. You're a, you also worked with one of my all-time favorite artists who's very underrated, I think, Ross Andrew. Yeah, he was uh, great. Talk about Ross. Talk about your relationship with Ross. It was a great one. Ross Ross yeah. was somebody who actually enjoyed cope, uh, sitting down with me and working out the story. I'd always come in like I always did with a full story, but then the breakdowns. How do we how do we make take that story and make it visually exciting? And right. so we could sit down and talk about it. I did that with a lot of right artists who wanted to participate. I wanted to always come up with a story. I wanted to know where I was going because I was I'm very big on subplots and very big on wanting all these tangled storylines to constantly be at odds with each other. So you have to really navigate your way through them. Right. Um, I don't remember what else. So. <laughs> He, uh, I, I've read that he went around New York City and sketched New York to make yeah. it look so accurate in the book. Like Spider Man lives there, and here's why. Yeah, he uh, he did that all the time. He would ask me what what backgrounds we would be using this time, and then you go and shoot them. Uh, Ross was a good guy. He was a really great guy. We did a comic strip together, uh, which never made it. Uh, we couldn't sell enough papers, but it was a beautiful a horror comic strip um, okay. at a time when that wasn't done, but the New York Daily News syndicate uh, bought it, uh, but we yeah. just couldn't get enough of the papers for it. Ross's art has always been great. Um, I think uh, he's always been underrated because he's not sleek. Mm. Um, his characters are a little bulky, but nobody draws perspective like him. Nobody draws yep. character just thinking like he does. There's a sequence is not in one of my Spider-Mans where I think it's Peter or somebody is walking up and down stairs or uh, some character is Peter is. And when the conversation is going for him, the character is walking up when the char conversation is going against him, the character is oh, walking nice. back down as it's going back and forth. So he plays the visuals. Yeah. Little things like that. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, his last issue, I think was the graduation issue. And, uh, he graduated, co Peter graduated college, uh, kind of graduated without that, uh, uh, gym class. But, uh, talk about that. You, you were, you were advancing the character of Peter Parker a bit. You, you had him propose, you had him graduate college. Talk about the decisions to do that. The thing was that, uh, Comic book characters are pretty much rooted in a certain time period. Yeah. Um, so Peter can't age all that much, but they had already decided he was going, he was in college. And my thought was he's going to have to graduate at some point. Let's put him into grad school because, and never mention it again. Mm. Mention it once. And from that point on, you still see Peter in a school background. So it psychologically, you're not aging him beyond school school age. Again, yeah. the whole thing was keep Peter as somebody who could make mistakes. And you can't do that if he was 21 or 22. Steve right. Ditko told me we talked about it, we talked about Spider-Man, and he said he always thought that Spider-Man should have stayed at 16. Mm. Because 16 was the last year you could make mistakes and not be thought of as stupid. Oh. Not be thought. Oh, that's be good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, what is it? 50 years now later, Spider-Man is still in grad school. <laughs> he hasn't, the, the you guy can be in grad school until you die. Yeah, <laughs> I guess you can. He's, he's still there. So he hasn't advanced much since 1970, what, 78 or 79. Um, to advance him, if you were to truly advance him, then he would be a very different person. And right. what makes people interested in Spider-Man is how he gets through the problems right? or can he get through the problems? Uh, based on your answer with Mary Jane, I, I suspect you weren't a fan of the marriage to Mary Jane in the, in the eighties. Huh? No, but I had nothing to do with it. So oh, oh, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, that, that advances them a, a bit by marrying him. 
Uh, and again, it yeah. takes him out of being the guy who has the world's problems on his shoulders. He's right. a character now who's married to a supermodel. Right. Has uh, all the money in the world. Yeah. Uh, another underrated artist that you worked with was Keith Pollard. Is that, am I saying Pollard. it right? Pollard. 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 Uh, Pollard. Talk about working with him. I, I, I liked his stuff too. Keith was wonderful. Um, yeah. He, first of all, he was a fan of the comics. So that meant he understood the characters inside and out. We did both Spider-Man and Fantastic Four together at the same time. Right. And he did both of them. He drew both of them as if they were those that the correct books. Uh, they mm. looked exactly like they should. He was able to catch it a star, the Kirby style for the Fantastic Four and the Ditko Ramita style for the uh, Spider-Man stuff. Great artist. I work with him again several times at DC. He did Vigilante for a while. He did some other stuff. And I worked with him about a couple of years back on a commercial job for DC. Well, that's awesome. This image is all over the place uh, still. Th this issue uh, 186 cover that Keith did, uh, I love that movement of Spider-Man all over the place. So his artwork is still being printed. <laughs> it's so yeah. popular. Well, he's so good. Yep. Uh, if you notice on that cover, it says Marvel's TV sensation. You were writing Spider-Man when CBS was broadcasting him. What, did, did the sales go up or what What? What changes as the head Spider-Man writer? Do you get any notes or anything that say hey, Spider-Man's on CBS? You got to do X, Y, Z. No, no. Uh, they, they never bothered us at all. Okay. Um, we, we, I think we were asked to put up. Uh, the the uh, Marvel uh, Marvel's TV sensation type thing, we were asked to put that on the cover, but um, uh, I don't recall them bothering us in the slightest. Well, that's good. Did the sales go up with the exposure to CBS at all? Or? I have no idea that they didn't tell us those things. Oh, yeah. Um. So uh, after that issue, uh, you start a subplot who hasn't been seen since Amazing Fantasy 15 with the burglar. Talk about bringing him back. I, that 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 was was your whole idea to lead it up to 200? Is that what uh, why you started? Yeah. Uh, yeah. With the idea of doing a special size 200 issue. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, my Frankly, my feeling was I kept, a, even as a fan, I was asking the question, what's the coincidence of Peter Parker being at Madison Square Garden, running into the burglar who then robs his house. Right. That seemed to be a little bit of a stretch. And I just tried to come up with a possible answer. I don't think I did a great job, but I think I did one that was, that got us past it. <laughs> right. But with the, with the burglar wanting to go back to the house uh, to get the money uh, that was buried. Um, you, why, why don't you think you did a good job? I, I liked it. Uh, because there were people who, uh, not everybody thought that it was handled correctly. Uh, I, I think the idea was exactly right, but I'm not sure that um, people wanted that uh, wanted that solved or anything. I don't know. I, I was happy with it. Yeah. So, any any temptation to have the burglar give him a name? Because Ditko and Stanley didn't give him a name. He was just the burglar, as you said. The murderer would work too, but. <laughs> no, I, I, uh, he didn't have a name. He wasn't going to. Yeah. Years later, uh, they introduced his daughter, uh, with the last name of Carradine. And I think in the credits of the Spider-Man movie, it says Carradine on it. I could be wrong, but, uh, you like just a nameless thug? Does it make, give it more mystery or. I was going to honor what Stan and Steve did. Yeah. Was that, uh, intimidating by going back and changing amazing fantasy 15 or giving it a little more backstory. Was that intimidating? No, uh, because I didn't think I was changing anything. I was just explaining why this character was in two places that Peter was that were as a New Yorker, Madison square garden is on 34th street in Manhattan and yeah. forest Hills in, is in the Queens. They're nowhere near each other. And there's no logical reason why, a character he met here would be there. So I just try to explain it to some degree. Right. One of uh, one thing I liked about your run was with Jameson. You turned his insanity up, <laughs> I thought. So much so that he had a mental breakdown. Talk about that. Was it fun to write Jameson? 
I love writing Jameson. Stan yeah. created a, a sense of dialogue for him that was yeah. just wonderful because it was so wacky, so absolutely wacky. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, he was fun to write. Uh, I love them uh, tied up with the uh, handcuffs. That's my favorite uh, issue. Oh, yeah. I, and did he peek under the mask or did he not peek under the mask? That that led for a couple issues. Talk about that. That was a great subplot. I have to, I totally remember the subplot, but I have no idea what I, uh, about the uh, intricacies of it. I just do not remember that. I'm yeah. sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. Um, that it leads is 50 into, years ago. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's been a minute, hasn't it? Uh, of course, the one that everyone talks about, and even to this day, uh, the introduction of Black Cat from... From uh, from what I've read on research, this was a character designed for uh, Spider Woman, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not sure why everybody is surprised. If you look at if you have the issue available, yeah, it's right here. Yeah. Uh, open it up to the letter column. Oh, they don't have it on a Marvel Unlimited, but I do have a picture oh. of it. Let me pull that up. Uh, let's see. And it's an alternate cover too, and I will pull it up in just a second. It's the, it's the original cover for the Spider Woman story. There you go. It's right there. Right there. See, the one on the left mm -hmm. was the cover for Spider Woman, mm -hmm. and the one on the right is the first uh, attempt at uh, the using her in Spider Man. Stan wanted to see more of Spider Man. He felt that. Um, uh, that the character was turned away from you too much, so oh, he wanted yeah. it, he wanted it the other way. So so that's what we did. But it's the Spider. Well, I wrote it for Spider Woman. I was oh. writing the Spider Woman book at the time, and uh, came up with the character and all of that after watching an, um, a Tex Avery cartoon called Bad Luck Blackie, uh, <laughs> which is which I mentioned in the letter column, and. Um, uh, it was go I had the cover drawn, and because Carmine needed work right away, so I had him design the cover. And um, uh, then I decided to leave Spider Woman mm -hmm. and go to uh, when when I was asked to take on the Spider Man book, right. and I and so I brought I brought her with me. Did, um, did, she, did it looks like a snake kind of on that spider woman cover. Is that what she would look like or what would she look like in spider woman? No. Um, I do, what's who's the villain in the story? Cause I don't remember what in spider That's woman. The, I think, um, I don't remember who spider woman. Cause I, cause I never did the story. Oh, okay. I got you. Um, but the whole idea was to, was to create this character for spider woman. Because right. I was trying to create characters for Spider Woman, and brought her over to Spider Man. Um, so uh, you yeah. know, and had to redevelop her right. once she was with Spider Man because it, Spider it Woman says, she could be a mystery character. I was in, trying to play very much a mystery type character. Right, and, so and it was uh, Dave Cockrum designed that costume right there. Yeah, it? yeah. Um, now, I have the original for that sketch. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. Uh, she hasn't changed much in in uh, 40 plus years. May, maybe a little bit more cleavage, but that's about it. I think. Yeah, far too much cleavage yeah. for, for uh, what I intended, but it's a different world today. It is. It is. Um, talk about Felicia Hardy, um, the second generation burglar or following in her footsteps. Talk about the origin, how you came up with that character. Well, first of all... Um, I forget if uh, if I put this in print or not. Uh, the name Felicia Hardy itself is is a joke, joke name. Oh, really? Think of it. Um, Spider Woman's name was um, Jessica Just, Drew, right? After Nancy Drew. Oh, okay. Felicia Hardy after the Hardy Boys. Ah, uh, I never, I never put that together. There you go. That's that's interesting. Funny. Um, was she intended to be a love interest like she's become? She's there. The two are back dating it. If, if you're reading the current no, books. No, I, I haven't read the current. I haven't read any of the books since I left the book. Um, okay. I mean, occasional issues, but that's about it. Right. Um, she was not going to be Jessica Drew's uh, love interest. 
Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> not, at, that, at that time period, I don't think the comic code would have allowed it. Today, right. there wouldn't be a problem, and I wouldn't have a problem with it either. Right. But um, I never thought of them as having a love interest. What I thought of her picking up on the fact that Spider-Man's a, te- a young guy because the way he talks, it was very obvious that he was young, yeah. that she was going to play against him and, and rattle him. So by coming on to him, he would mm-hmm. know how to deal with it. So she used his sexuality for that, not for a love interest. I had an absolutely no problem when they when later on they made her a love interest because it was so close and it was so... You know, though I knew what I wanted to do, I can't expect anyone else to have known that, and I didn't tell anybody my plans. Right. So I thought they did a fine job. Right. We actually have a question uh, in our chat about um, Felicia Hardy, uh, and and actually Catwoman. Uh, Adam asks uh, asks Mr. Wolfman about what's the biggest differences between Felicia Hardy and Selena Kyle. Well, um, first of all, as a, I know, the concept is that we take Catwoman. And use her as that. Right. Obviously, since she was created for for Spider Woman, there was no similarity. She was a character who created bad luck. Right. And if if we had never done anything outside of that, if I had stayed on Spider Woman, that's the character that it would have been. Mm-hmm. But once I moved her over to Spider Man, she had to become an action character because yes. Spider Man's an action hero. Right. Uh, Spider Woman was a was more of a noir femme fatale type of character, and she would have been that had we stayed in, um, stayed with her in Catwoman in uh, Spider Woman. The big difference is they're totally different characters. Uh, one of them has a superpower, creates bad luck. Um, uh, one of them is not in love with the hero. Yeah, yeah. You know. Uh, they're not similar, and had I even thought of Spider Woman at the time, I wouldn't have done it. I would have renamed the character. Mm. Uh, but um, I hadn't even thought of that uh, because I'm thinking only of Spider Man and Spider Woman, so my head didn't even think of uh, of uh, Catwoman in that. Right. Um, you launched a female title, uh, which in, in modern day is hard to do. But in the 1970s, she's only had a couple appearances, and you launched Spider Woman. Talk a bit about that. I, from my understanding, they did Stan uh, create Spider Woman and She Hulk to save the copyright? Is what I've I, the rumor is. I don't know. Can you confirm that or? Yeah, fairly close. Okay. Stan, Stan asked for those characters to be created. Okay. He didn't create them um, uh, for the copyright reasons. Because uh, in the case of uh, in case of Spider Woman. Uh-huh. The problem was Filmation, the animation studio, uh, uh, was going to come out with a Spider Woman, different Spider Woman show, and they wanted to, and Marvel wanted to protect the name because of Spider Man. So they had Archie Goodwin do an issue of Marvel Spotlight, I think it was, with Spider Woman. It sold phenomenally well, and yeah. they asked him to create to start a new book with Spider Woman. He didn't want to work on Spider Woman uh, for whatever reason. Um, I don't. I don't remember. And they asked me to do it, and um, I. I wanted to change her because in the original she was like a mutated spider, mm-hmm. and I didn't. And Stan did not want that, and I did not want that for one shot. That was fine, right? Uh, but as a series, I wanted to make her. You know. Uh, uh, not a, not just a, uh, a mutant type character like that. Um, also, a little bit of a redesign. Her hair came out. Uh, yeah, I think that it, was. Yeah. I always I hated the fact that her hair was cut up. Yeah. You're know, talking with about Carmine Infantino as the artist, and he drew great hair. I yeah, love the did. work he did on the Flash. And I said, no, let's. That would the hair whipping behind her created a sense of action. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And by opening up the mask to let her hair flow, there would constantly be motion uh, in all the panels. Yep. Yep. And I think you gave her the name, Jessica Drew, like you said, I don't think they named her in the first one shot. Did they? No, no. Jessica was after my daughter, Jessica and Drew was, as I say, after Nancy Drew. Nancy Drew. That's awesome. 
Um, also, um, you killed, I'll put it in quotes, you killed Aunt May. <laughs> or at least you're the first one to do it. Uh, looking at the old letters pages, did people go nuts? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. they went totally nuts. Yeah. Um, uh, which, what I was trying to do is call attention to Spider-Man. Uh, mm -hmm. Make it something that people would want to check out and hopefully they'd like it and continue buying it. Uh, if they're not buying it, they it's because they don't know that we're doing brand new stuff with the character that they may find interesting. Yeah. And w was it a root? I mean, she came back, but... Uh was there she any was always set to come back. Okay, so I, it wasn't uh, a long-term... Yeah. No, I uh, I had it approved by Stan. I, okay. I, uh, I went into his office and gave him the whole issue by issue what I was going to do with this and asked him if it was okay, and he said yes. Um, the... I mean... I, I think the the goal of the end of every comic book is to make people want to buy the next one. Yeah. And and your panel uh, down here, I think Keith Pollard did this. Uh, <laughs> this. This scene, and this this dates me and you. I remember what a telegram was from Western Union. <laughs> but right. um, uh, May dies in the nursing home. I mean that that makes you pick it up. You got to find out how his reaction is going to be. Exactly. And that, that was, was a, that was my goal. Yeah, that, and that, yet to play fair, because Mysterio was the villain in that, and he could create the illusions that I wanted. So it was yeah. all the clues were there if you wanted to find them. Right, and that, that I think that's kind of a fun little Mysterio is trying to steal money from seniors, so he takes over a nursing home and he says, "I made like eight million. It's a good gig, you know." But only Mysterio would think of that. I think that was fun. Um, oh, I. Talk about the, the reaction in the letters pages because you had uh, uh, people's names. Did you write the letters pages, by the way, at the end? Well, uh, yeah. I, uh, okay. I, I mean, I the letters were from the fans. And, oh, I know. But but I, did... I wrote the answers. Right. And so I, I think you put just people's <laughs> names and uh, uh, where, what city they're from. Uh, I can't believe you killed Aunt May. I can't believe you blah, blah, blah. Talk about that letters page. That was fun. Yeah. Uh, there. Was did mail triple or double or what's your memory of what the mail was like? I don't. We got a lot. That's all yeah. I remember. I, <laughs> uh, comics never got as much mail as, as as any fan would think. Oh really? Uh, there were there were times that I could have written an issue of a book that we got no mail whatsoever. Huh. Uh, yeah. So uh, sometimes that's why some of the letters seem a little bit weird because we had to print what we want what we liked. What yeah. what came in? Um, I, I guess that's uh, uh, until you do something shocking. If you if you're doing something people like, they don't tend to the write in. I imagine, but if you tick them off, here they come. Yeah. <laughs> it's just and like that's the internet. Exactly what I wanted to do. Yeah, and you've got uh, you got the panel of she's in the she's in the coffin, man. I mean, there. If you were reading this, there's no doubt she's dead. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that fun? <laughs> uh, exactly. There's the body. You don't usually show the body sometimes, but there's That's the body. That's why we showed it. <laughs> um, again, subplot leading up to 200, you've got, uh, oh, this, this panel's fun. I call that the floating heads of guilt or, or uh, spider fans call that the, that goes back to Ditko. <laughs> He's always has the yeah. floating heads of guilt. Yeah. <laughs> Um, talk. Oh, Jen, Jonathan wants to know, did you read all those letters? Uh, obviously you probably did being the editor of the book. So yeah, I read all the letters There were, yep. it's not like we had hundreds of them, yeah. you know? Yep. Um, so that leads up to 200 a bit. Um, talk a bit about, um, it was the first 75 center and did you have to fight to get that? Did uh, the Fantastic Four 200 was first. Right. Uh, I had to fight tooth and nail to get that. They honestly didn't believe that uh, anyone would spend that much money. Uh, we argued over it for, for months. Finally, they gave in, and the thing sold better than the uh, regular comic car sold. By um, far, they made so much that when it was time for Fantastic Four, when it was time for the Spider-Man 200, yeah. And I went in and said, I'd like to do that. There was no problem instantly. Yes. Because they, they were shown that people would spend that much money for a double sized book. And the, the comics were normally 40 cents. So yeah, you nearly doubled the, the price, but they came in. 
But they they also got a big book too. They didn't just get the normal I don't know, 20 pages. They got a yeah. they got their money's worth out of that one. So yeah. you had the great John Romita, who rest in peace, just passed away, did that cover, it looks like. Any any thoughts of what uh on on working with him on that cover or any thoughts of working with John Romita? Well, I don't remember anything specific on the cover. Right. Um but John, you know, was John was not only a great artist, he was a he was a really loving per, lovable person. I mean, he was really nice and very much a teacher type person who would explain what was going on. He really smart, really good. Um uh is you know, I'm glad that he had time to retire and enjoy life after yeah. after all the comments because the deadlines we had were insane. Yeah. Um couple fun things in this issue. Uh, it says I special no, special note. Uh, can you guess that Stanley wrote a page? And we even today, this person uh, ultimate plush in the chat was like, which one? Which page did Stan write? And you say it in the letters pages later. It's the very last one. Yeah. So talk about that decision to have Stanley come back for number two hundred. He wrote this page, right? The very last one. The it was a standalone page. Yeah. Uh, because I knew that he wouldn't have the time to read all the book beforehand. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that's the type of stuff he did. He did so, so wonderfully and effortlessly. Yeah. Um, that sort of internal monologue material. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. It's issue 200 of Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. The creator, the writer creator was there. Of course, we want to honor him and Ditko. Um, and so by, and Steve, unfortunately, would not, though he worked for Marvel and I, we did a whole bunch of comics together. He wasn't going to draw Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, but to have Stan write something made, a, made total sense mm -hmm. uh, to honor the character. Uh, talk about Steve Ditko. You said you worked with him a bit. So I, I'm always curious about any, any stories that you might have of Ditko. Well, uh, we worked together on Machine Man. Yep. Uh, we worked together on... Uh, I forget the name of it, but it was about a Japanese monster. It was originally a Godzilla story, but we lost the rights to Godzilla. So we had it redrawn, just the monster, um, to be a monster that I found in Japanese mythology. Okay. Uh, we did that together. We did a Dracula story together. We did a couple of other things together. Nice um, guy. Easy to talk to. Uh, we talked a lot about Spider-Man. He just wouldn't draw it. Um, but uh, as I said, he thought that Spidey should should never be older than 16. That yeah. way he could keep making, he could make mistakes and he was a kid. If mm -hmm. you're an adult, you're pathetic and you're making those type of mistakes. And since my belief was that we had to go back to that sort of Spider-Man where we needed to... Um, not have him be the super success that he could get a supermodel and all of that stuff. That made sense to me. We right. couldn't go back to 16, but we could go back quite a, we could set it up to feel like it was that. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't want to skip over one of my favorite issues I read. I actually got this in the barber shop, which is ironic nowadays. Uh, when I was a little <laughs> kid, <laughs> uh, ish, the barber gave this to me. So this was issue one. Uh, 97. Yeah. That's my Spidey. second favorite Spidey story. Yeah. I, that, that is a great, uh, issue and it, it's drawn. So, the fights are brutal with Spidey and Kingpin in this one by Keith. He did yeah. such a good job. Talk about what, even with one hand behind his back, Spidey keeps up. Talk about that story. That's a great one. One ninety seven. It's, it's my favorite, um, of, uh, after the, um, Jonah Jameson, uh, with the, uh, handcuff bomb. Um, because of the ending, because oh yeah, here you have a story where the kingpin has been after Spider Man for years, and his what, and he truly loves his wife, I, Vanessa, I think. I yeah, forget Vanessa her name. Fisk. Yep. Um, he truly loves her, and she yep. gives him an ultimatum: do what you want until twelve o'clock, and then we go off. Yep. And the fight took so long. Yep. That he has one second and he passes it and he just wants to kill. He could kill Spider-Man right there and then. 
Yep. And he can't. And he has can't. to go off. And I thought that was a really yep. good use of a villain that that gave a lot of extra material that you would never have uh, expected. Was uh, Kingpin appearing in Daredevil at the time, or was this before? Much I before. Think it, I think Much it was before. before. Yeah. It was created uh, for Spider-Man. Right, in, in issue 50, I think. Um, uh, Ramita it was one and, of the early John Romita stories. Right, yep. Yeah. And he hadn't been seen for a while. Like you kind of brought him back. I think he went, uh, fell off into the water or something. I think you gave it a little background of what happened. I don't remember. In the story, but... Um, but but Spidey is beaten up pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> in that story. Um, you, you, um, do you, that again, that gives drama. He's injured. He's super human strength, but he's injured that. I mean, that makes it, him mortal. It, it makes him not a Superman. Exactly. He's a character who can be hurt and he can lose a fight. And that's something that generally superheroes can't don't do. Right. Yeah. I, 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 I like it when he was injured. I thought that was just a, it, it literally puts his arm behind his back to fight. I mean, literally. Yeah. So, uh, so after 200, uh, you brought the Punisher back a little bit. I, I a visual scene. I remember is the Punisher, uh, again, you're, you're trying to sell the next issue. You got the Punisher aiming a gun at Peter Parker and says, I know your secret tune in next month. All right. Here's my 40 cents again. <laughs> that was my job. Yeah, you did a good job because I, uh, it, you had you write great cliffhangers. You make them buy more. <laughs> the Punisher, fairly new character uh, at that point. Talk about bringing the Punisher back for a two-parter. I thought Jerry Conway, who created the Punisher, did a great job. Yeah. And uh, I don't remember if it was my my th decision or somebody else saying asking. To be honest, uh, for the Punisher, but I was more than happy to do it. Right. Um. You're, you're in your um, last few issues come about uh, after the Punisher. You do a Dazzler. Did someone ask you to do the Dazzler too? Yeah, we all, uh, we were all told that we had to do a Dazzler story. Right. Um, oh, I found the, um, I found the letters pages we were talking about. Aunt May is dead. I never thought you'd do it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if Aunt May is dead. The black cat is dead. How can... You're just killing everybody, Marv. What's going on here? <laughs> Look at it. It's fun. It's fun to think about uh, where these people are that were in the letter, letters page yeah. a couple of years ago. So I think that's fun. Um, anyway, uh, your last issue uh, is, again, you go back to your co-creation of Black Cat uh, to wrap up your run. Talk a bit about bringing her back. I you, must have one... you must have loved the character to bring her back. Oh, I, I like the character from the minute uh, yeah. uh, we created her. You know, between yeah. Dave's design, which was beautiful, and what I wanted to do with the character, uh, I you have to remember, she's also the very first female villain that Spider-Man fought, solo villain. Oh, yeah. So I was going to say Princess Python was in a group. But yeah, uh, yeah first solo, solo villain. villain. That's true. Yep. So I really like the character and I don't understand why it took almost 200 issues for a female villain to show up. I don't either. I, um, and she's, I like how she's flirty. I like how she does, isn't totally evil. Uh, she's, she's riding the line a bit. So it's, well, she's a criminal. Um, yeah. uh, but she did it for her dad. Exactly. So, now uh, it's, it's comics. It is. It is comics. Um, talk a bit about that was your last issue. Talk about uh, you, you left in the middle of a two parter talk because David Michelinie had to finish that story and put in that she was obsessed with Spider-Man. Uh, she had a little bit of mental anguish from her father passing away. Is that what you intended or was that all no, David? That's all David. Uh, uh, what I, was I, your second part in, intended to be, you think? You're asking something for 50 years ago that I never did. I know. <laughs> Come on. Can't you bring it? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you, um, I don't remember. Okay. Um, did you have future plans for Spider-Man? It seemed like an abrupt ending. Uh, because I knew that was my last issue. It wasn't an abrupt ending. I yeah. could have written Spider-Man forever. I would have loved to. But once I left uh, Marvel to go to DC, that was impossible. Yeah. 
Um, any ideas that you wish you could go back and do of Spider-Man? Something that, that, that was in the, you had a character that you introduced. Uh, let me see if I can find her, uh, that they wrapped her up in the next issue. Like, uh, here she is. She was only appeared once. Her name was Dawn star, which was Peter Parker's student. Any plans for Dawn? I, again, not having actually written any issue with her. I didn't, if you asked me if I had a character named Dawn Star, I wouldn't, I would have said no. I just don't remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But any Spider-Man ideas that you wished you would have been able to tackle? Oh, I'm sure there were, uh, but yeah. after this point, they're gone. Because if you're doing your work correctly, yeah, the story that you're doing can only be really done for, for one character. Because it has, to, it would have to be changed if the characters were two different people. You know, it's what I said about Spider Woman. Spider Woman was one way when I was going to do her as a, as the Spider Woman villain, but I had to change her to fit the Spider Man world. Yeah. yeah. Another thing that you did uh, outside of Amazing that was Spider Man related was this first prose novel with your friend Lynn Ween. Uh, and an introduction by Stan Lee. Talk about how the prose novel came about. Um, Pocket Books got made a deal with Marvel, mm -hmm. and um, uh, we we got to do the first one. I wrote the book. I wrote the issue, um, and then it did really well. And they asked us to come back and do eleven more uh, yeah. books. So. Uh, but we knew we couldn't write it, so we just edited them and hired writers and decided what each book would be and work with the talent and then came in later and fixed them up and made it work. And I think that there is a uh, editor's note from you that said, hey, so-and-so -so happened in the novel. Go see it. Go read it. And you put that in the actual comic. So I thought that was kind of a that, – yeah. that novel counted. It wasn't uh, just a, a piece of media <laughs> out there with Spider-Man on it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, any challenges writing Spider-Man in prose versus comics? Any differences? Yeah, it's, uh, Spidey is a very visually oriented character. The way the way he swings, the way he mm. walks up the side of a building, it's not the way you've ever seen anyone else do. That hunched over figure, the uh, the legs and weird uh, positions and such, that's pure visual. Mm -hmm. And somehow you have to do, uh, get that across without stating it directly because you can't do that in book in writing prose. So it was very challenging, but I love doing it. I don't know if you know this, but, uh, that book, uh, is up on audible. <laughs> they, they had a voice actor recently. I think as of 2019, they came back and did this as an audio book. Have you, have you listened to it or did you know that, that they did that? I, d I did not know about it. Yep. They went, they went back and got a bunch of Marvel prose books. They did some in the nineties and they did your 71 and, uh, they've got, uh, an audio sample up on Amazon if you want to listen to it. So, um, I have not read the book. I've always wanted to read the book. I'm going to have to track it down. Did you, did you, did you enjoy that one? Yeah. 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 It was, it was a very rushed deadline, but uh, yeah, I loved it. Yeah. Um, and you had another experience with Spider-Man after you, uh, were at DC a little bit, you came in the nineties to do the cartoon. Uh, did you write the cartoon a little bit? Yeah, I wrote, I wrote an episode with, um, Mysterio. Mysterio. Talk about that process. What was that like? Uh, that one was something I had been writing animation for a while and I went up, uh, to the Marvel offices. There were two stories that were available the Mysterio story and a black cat story. And I asked to write the black cat story. Of course. So they gave me the Mysterio story. <laughs> Why didn't they want the founding father of the black cat to write the black cat story? That makes no I sense. I don't know. Cause that Mysterio story, when I reread the original yeah, is amazingly lacking of plot. There, <laughs> it is, it is not a very good issue. Oh yeah. Um, um, uh, all right. Uh, we've got a couple, uh, we got about 10 minutes left. So chat, if you would like to ask Marv a question, uh, we're going to, uh, I'll pop them up and we'll ask some questions. I've got some that, um, 
we just have comments. One's from Milo. Absolutely love Mars work on ASM. ASM 200 was one of the first issues I read and absolutely loved. And so glad to have Marv on, Brad. So thank you, Milo. Uh, we have Vinkman saying hello, Brad and Marv. Uh, we also, let's see, we had some other questions. So I'm going to pop them up. Um, have you have you been following Spider-Man since you left? Maybe not the comics, but the movies. Have you seen the oh, movies? Yeah. Yeah, I lo- uh, yeah, I I have not read the comics, but I have seen all the movies. And uh, what Sam Raimi did with that first one and two, yep. uh, one and two, was just perfect Spider-Man, as far as I was concerned. Right. And frankly, I think the organic web shooter makes a lot more sense than the mechanical web shooter. Right. Uh, um, a sixteen-year-old kid wouldn't come up with that. He wouldn't do a uh, spandex suit either. <laughs> you know, it'd be an ugly no looking suit. But he was trying to be a wrestler. And they got dressed up in suits. That is true. Yep. Uh, Jay Lopez says, uh, ASM 197, the Kingpin fight was an awesome fight and an underrated story. I would agree, Jay. That was one of my favorites. Me too. I, I really love that as for reasons, as I said. Uh, Radiac is watching from Panama. Hi, from Panama to a legend. Uh, what if, if what would have you done if you'd stayed on Spider-Woman? Well, we well, kind of talked to Ari about the Black Cat, but any other long-term plans for Spider-Woman if you lasted... Uh, if you look, if you go back, if you go back to my my issues with Spider Woman, yeah, you could tell that I really did not have any idea what to do with her because I kept changing the approach that I took, and by the time the last thing was she was going to be a very like 1930s noir type character, yeah. but I wasn't happy with any of the stuff that I wrote there, so that's why I was uh, that's why I wanted to get her off it. Uh, are you most proud of Spider-Man with your Marvel work or actually Bla- the, the Dracula I imagine is your favorite if I had to guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Spider-Man, a number is a close number two, you think, or. I, I, I really like what I did with Spidey. Um, yeah. Especially because I wasn't sure I could, uh, but I, I thought that I caught the dialogue. I know I caught the subplotting. This type of stuff Stan would have done for that. Um so yeah, I was really happy with that. Yeah. Hornacek says comic books teach you things. ASM 200 taught me about silverfish. I had never heard of silverfish before, <laughs> which. Uh, <laughs> and they're, they're pretty bad. Uh, I've never, ha- well, I've got a lot of comics. I've knock on wood. I've never had silverfish attack them. They love pulp and paper. Is that what they do? They ate the, the burglars uh, loot at the bottom of the Parker house. So. Yeah. Uh, again, it's that thing in spider-man where people don't get what they want <laughs> um we had another question about um selena kyle um we we kind of talked about the differences did you did you ever have a chance to write catwoman at all yeah i wrote okay. the very first uh catwoman solo story okay um what what's some differences writing the two i guess uh well, as, I, as i said before uh uh, Felicia has superpowers. Uh, Selena does not. Yeah. Um, it, it's the stuff that I said earlier. Yeah. yeah. Two different characters. We got a question from Josh. He says, uh, Mr. Wolfman, what title character did you enjoy writing the most? Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, Batman, or New Teen Titans? Titans. Talk about why Titans. Why? Yeah. Because, because the characters were all thought out in advance to uh, to serve a specific need for my storytelling so it's a book that i originated came up with all the concepts and ideas for that for it and then once george perez came in it just became perfect any any perez stories that you can share another one we lost uh and a real shame because he was such a sweet guy george uh, anyone who's met george knows that you're instantly his friend um, to go over more would take, uh, many more podcasts. Right. This one, I, 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 maybe this person knows you, but he's heard stories of poker games. You enjoy playing poker. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we haven't played poker for maybe 20 years. Well, there you uh, go. we did in New York. Yeah. Um, and, uh, when everybody moved out, uh, you know, we were not near each other anymore. So we're talking about, you know, 50 cent poker. We're not talking about not, actual not, money. If people lost money, they probably lost um, at most $20. Yeah. 
Yeah, that, that's an e evening's entertainment. You can afford that's that. That's exactly you right. You, you don't want to broadcast it. If you're broadcasting it, that's big money on television. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was all just fun. It was yeah. a chance for all of us on a Friday night to sit down around the table and talk and have fun. Right. One of my uh, favorite stories, Spider-Man relates, one one years, but Paul Jenkins wrote a great story of Spider-Man and the Thing having a poker night with the Marvel characters. And Felicia came in and played the game with them. So that was a great story. I don't know if you've read that one, but it was no. a poker night by Ben's. Uh, Ultimate Spider Plush wants to know about your favorite Spider-Man movie. I think uh, the first uh, Spider-Man 2, the Dr. Octopus story. I thought that was a perfect Spider-Man story. Um, there, there's been a bit of a debate about, um, the Mar the current Spider-Man movies with so tied to Tony Stark. Any thoughts on that at all? I, I, I personally don't care for it. Uh, you know, if, if, you, if what you want, if what you're looking for is a faith, totally faithful adaptation of a movie, you're not going to get it. Yeah. Uh, they're going to do a type of story that works well for their universe. Um, and I thought. I think they do real. They've been doing really good work on those. Uh, I really like the Spider-Man films. Um, so Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire, or uh, Tom Holland? I, I'm guessing Andrew, uh, uh, Tobey Maguire for your favorite. I think yeah, I like uh, I like Tobey because he seems the most Peter Parkerish to me. Yeah. Uh, the st I met um, Sam Raimi years before. Uh, the Spider-Man uh, was even turned into a movie years before. So there was, and he, w all he wanted to talk about was my run on Spider-Man. No, that's so cool. So he was a huge Spider-Man fan. And as I say, I actually do think the organic web shooters are smarter because I can't believe that Peter would have created, been able to do that. And if he had been able to create that, he could have sold that for fortunes. He could have. Yeah. It's because the mo modern day posted, isn't it? The sticky. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I think if you're given all those other powers, why wouldn't you be given the ability to to generate webs? Right. Why not? It, well, it yeah. would come out of somewhere beside your wrist if you were a spider, you know. <laughs> so that well, would <laughs> you want it this way because Steve drew this incredible action yeah. in the comics, so you'd want to continue that. Right. Um, we have a. A question, or maybe it's uh, yeah. Uh, Thomas says, uh, "I loved your use of the Daily Globe. That was something we didn't talk about. He he left the Bugle because Jameson's so nuts. Uh, he went to work for Bushkin, and I uh, wonder how long you would have had kept Peter working there if you were still stayed on the book. It would have eventually gone back uh, yeah. because Jonah is too too much fun to write. It is, yep. Yeah. And I love there was a scene because I was rereading your run in anticipation of this." You turned uh, Robbie into a little bit of Jonah when he got behind the desk. He went a little nuts, too. <laughs> I don't remember that, but uh, I could certainly see that that job would make you crazy. And in rereading it, uh, you, you talked about how Robbie lost a son, I think, uh, in your run. I don't remember. It was, it was just a throwaway line. I don't think it's been mentioned since, but uh, Robbie talked about losing his son and, and rereading it. I didn't remember that. So, Yeah, I, um, I don't either. Let's see. We got uh, Kyle from Argentina's watching. Uh, what's your favorite Teen Titans run besides yours? Oh, jeez. <laughs> um, well, I never read anybody else's Teen Titans, so I couldn't tell you. It's, I can only tell you mine. Okay. What's yours yeah. then? Uh, probably not my favorite story per se, but you're talking about a run of uh, the uh, Judas Affair, Judas Affair, yeah. Um, my favorite single issue would have been, it's a story called um, A Pretty Girl is Like a Malady. It's uh, Teen Titans 17 or 18, I forget which. Okay. We have, since we're on DC, we got one from Josh asking about uh, your Batman runs. It's an excellent run with the Lazarus Affair being one of my favorite Raj al Ghul stories. Anything to say about your Batman tenure? Not really. Um, it's fun writing Batman, but I'm a bit. I'm a. I much prefer writing Superman. How come? I. Uh, I'm not a big fan of crazy heroes, and Spider and Batman started to become crazy. Mm. Um, 
I mean, they fixed it in the last number of years, but um, it's not my view of what of the way Batman should be. So I wrote a whole bunch of them. I really enjoyed writing them. Um, and um, Superman is, to me, the ideal superhero. He's perfect. Yep. Yep. And I love writing him. Awesome. Um, last one from Didymus says, who do you think was better for Peter? I, what, what you got? You got Mary Jane, you got Gwen Stacy, you got Betty Brandt, Felicia Hardy. Who do you like? I would say that Peter would be incapable of keeping any any one of them for a, for a very long time. He'd screw it up somehow. He, he's an eternal bachelor, huh? Unless he hangs up the webs, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I agree. Well, Marv, what can we what what can we look forward? What, what are you working on these days? Tell let's plug something for you. I'm unfortunately not able to tell you. Okay. Um, I'd have to kill you. That's no, okay. <laughs> I, I handed in a script last week. Awesome. Um, but I can't even tell you to who. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, if they want to follow you, they're uh, marvwolfman.com, I saw. Yeah, that's my website. Yep. I'm on Facebook and I'm on Twitter and I'm on Threads. Oh, you moved over to Threads, huh? Yep. Yeah. Early adapter. Yeah, um, well, Twitter's getting weird, so we'll we'll see how it goes. But I'm keeping Twitter because it's a, frankly a, a simpler uh, engine. Uh, yeah. Whereas I'm still not sure why I'm doing everything right on our threads. Oh, we got one more comment that came in from Michael Reed. He says, it was cool to see you on the CW Crisis crossover, and you got to interact with the Flash and Supergirl. That's awesome that you got to do that. Yeah, that was, that, was, that was a lot of fun. What was that experience like? They flew me up to Vancouver. Nice. Uh, they they gave me lines. I I didn't write them, and considering I generally don't have a memory, I managed to make it work. I I managed to do it. Uh, still, I, I thought I'd forget every word, but uh, <laughs> the only time I did it correctly was when the camera was on me. Oh well, there. <laughs> well, that's the uh, important part. That's when you're supposed to get the line perfect. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I hadn't gotten it correct in all the practicing. Yeah. If given the chance, would you write another Spider-Man story? You got some sure. left in you? Sure. I love the character. I would absolutely yeah. love to. I would love to read it, too. So, um, well, Marv, thank you for your time. Uh, my pleasure. Th thank you for so many years of entertainment. Uh, well, it's, my it's, pleasure. You'll, you've lived up to my expectations and more. So thank you, sir. And you take care. All right. And everybody. Thank you, everybody. Care. Thank you, for, everybody, for watching. Hey!